All right, gang. So I'm Mr. Spencer. Mr. Conrad. We're here today. We're going to talk a little bit about describing position. Um, so to get going, now I think we need to tell them a little bit about um, just something with, with our families here because my dad ran cross country and track for, for my dad. Yeah. He, so your dad was my dad as coach. And so every once in a while we'll be sitting at like Spencer family functions and they'll start talking about the good old days yeah. with cross country and um, coach Conrad will, will come up. And one of the things that always gets mentioned is that he didn't have to move very much. He could stand in one spot <laughs> and, and they would hear Spencer, get up that hill. So they, he, his voice carried very well. It, uh, being soft spoken runs in my family. So, so the other day, um, something happened that, uh, that I think is going to help out with what we're doing today or okay. what we're talking about today is that, um, my daughter's running cross country now oh, okay. and, and she always says, dad, you have a really scary coaching voice. <laughs> and, and I just, I, we got to show a little, a little clip here of, of that okay. um, because it's going to help out with what we're talking about a little bit later. All right. Sounds good. Let's watch the little clip. Here we go, Isabel. You're a sprinter now. Eyes up. Elbows back. Now we drive. Now we go. Come on, Isabel. Go. All right. So today what we're going to be talking about, our big ideas that we're trying to think about are how do we know something is moving? We've been discussing this a little bit so far in class. What is position defined? There are three parts to the coordinate system, and then there's three ways to represent the location of an object. So those are the main big ideas we're going to be talking about today. So when we're talking about how do we know an object is moving, I, I have to show this this picture here. This is this is my youngest son. Oh boy. Um, he is. Yeah, this this describes him really well because after he did this, he said, "Dad, I'm trying to kick you in the face." Um, that was very nice of him. I know. He. That, I I love him a lot. <laughs> but but when we're thinking about an object in motion like kind of what we what we see here you know it's in motion because what we're doing is we're comparing it to something else and we're seeing that its position changes so really in order to be able to find if something's in motion you have to be able to explain where it is and 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 how it moves okay so position is an object's location relative to a reference point or an origin so like some, sometimes people get really confused, like, well, what's the origin talking about? Yeah. Well, if we think into math, we have the coordinate plane that we always talk about. Well, where do you always start in the coordinate plane? You always start at the origin where zero, zero is located, which, Mr. Spencer, didn't you want to talk about the coordinate system? I do. I do. <gasps> oh, there look at that. Go. There Magic we go. That. So um, when we're thinking about a coordinate system, kind of think about a map. Okay, think about how, how a map works. And if we really want that to, to work well, there's three things that we need to make sure we, we have. So the first thing is we want to have that, that origin or that, that fixed reference point. In other words, um, when, when we talk about fixed, it's not moving or, or anything like that. So it's in the same spot, kind of like our origin on the coordinate plane. It always starts at zero, zero. Exactly. Gotcha. And along with that, we also want to have this uniform system for measuring distance. Now, what we mean by that is we want to measure in like, I don't know, meters or feet or other things like that. Something that's uniform, something that doesn't change. Why don't we want to use steps? Because some people have little itty bitty steps and some people have really little Ah, that is that's a good point. And then this one, like the, the whole spatial directions thing, some people don't know what that means. What, what, what does spatial directions mean? That, so we're talking <laughs> like north, south, east, west, oh, or forward. Going, or, to, or backwards, or yeah. going left or right versus just saying, Go that direction that way. Yeah, yeah, go go over there. That doesn't work unless you're talking to your kids. Yeah, and then it really doesn't work. Then it really doesn't work, okay. So so this is um, this takes us back to that whole idea of, of the, the coaches yelling and things like that. Um, yesterday my daughter had a had a cross country meet. Oh, and, and she another, she, she did well. Good, she did well. Good. Um, and it was fun because I didn't have to be the coach. I just got to sit back and kind of watch. And I, as the race was getting ready, um, I, I'm sitting back there. I'm watching. There's this group of girls all at the start line getting ready to go. The the they're, the the guy with the gun is is over there, and he's, he's getting, getting them all set. And I look back at the tent, 
and there's a group of girls that are just kind of sitting there. This doesn't sound like a good this, story. This is. Can you imagine your dad in this in this situation? This would not have gone well. It would not have gone well. So, as I'm watching this, all of a sudden, the gun goes off. So this big boom, and right as that happens, the girls all take off, and the girls at the the tent, at the, the tent realize what had happened. So they're like, "Oh crap." So they started running instantly, probably. Yes. Yeah. So they're they're <laughs> going as fast as they can, but they're behind the start line, and the race has started, already started. Already started. And and I thought, you know what? This would be a perfect example to talk about no. position. Exactly. All right. So for here, what we're looking at is, well, our start line is going to be our origin because that's where everybody started the race except for the yahoos who were back at the tent because they didn't quite realize they were having too much fun texting or whatever else was going on. So our start lines are origin. Well, everybody else is moving forward. As you can see, they're about 30 meters ahead of everybody else. Whereas the girls who are at the tent, well, they're not quite starting at the origin. They are already 40 meters behind, let's say, because that's where we have on our diagram. They've actually got to get to the origin. They actually have to get to the start line before they can actually get start the race. But they're starting 40 meters behind everybody. So how do we know they're 40 meters behind? Well, because look at our start line. Okay, so here's our start line. That's where we're starting, but they're already back here. Well, we common like just looking at our our start line, we can tell they're behind it. It's to the left of it, which we usually associate with being on the negative side. Hence why we have our negatives on this side. And usually when we move to the right, Mr. Spencer, it's usually because we're thinking positive. We're moving past our origin. We're going further than where we started. But what if we're doing like up and down sort of thing? Hmm, up and down. Well, if we're going up and down, we're still gonna have that start line or our origin. Well, if we're moving up, that would be our positive direction because mm -hmm. most people associate positive going up. And if we're going down, again, from the origin, we would be looking towards the ground, so to speak. So that would be going in the negative direction. Perfect. So let's do this. Let, let's use this example and, and talk about three different ways uh, that we can represent position. Um, and then after we go through each of these three ways with the, the directed line segment, the component, component, the magnitude and direction, then we'll give them like a little example problem that they need to be able to. I think that sounds like a good idea. Sounds good. So this first way is the directed line segment, which is really kids, just a fancy way of saying an arrow. Uh, so the first thing you wanna do is you wanna draw an arrow from the origin to the object. So as you can see down at the bottom down here, we have our origin is right here. So we're drawing an arrow in the direction where the kids who were where they were supposed to be, uh, they started off, they went 30 meters to the right. So we already have drawn the length of the arrow to represent how far the, the good kids, we'll call them good kids, because they were where they were supposed to be, uh, and the distance from the origin to where they went. So the other part of the arrow is direction of the arrow shows where it is located to where the origin. So we always start at the origin and we draw an arrow towards where we're trying to... Um, where the object is. Where, where the object is. Thank you, Mr. Spencer, for filling in my brain fart. It happens sometimes. It does. All right, so the next one is the whole idea of components. So when we're talking about components, this time what we want to do is we want to first talk about having like a positive or negative to just show which side of the origin it's on. In this case, we're saying that to the right is, is positive, to the left is, is negative. And then we want to say how far from the origin the object is. So for, for our girls that started on time, their, their position is positive, meaning it's to the, to the right of the start line, mm -hmm. 30 meters. Okay. The girls that are playing catch up, their, their component position is negative 40 meters, meaning they're to the left of that 40 meters. The last way is kind of a simple way, but it's kind of similar to the component method, but it's calling magnitude and direction. So the magnitude is dealing with how far they've gone. So 30 meters, 40 meters, 50 meters, whatever. And then which direction are, are they from the origin? So are they 30 meters to the right, like the girls who were at the start line at the beginning? Or are they 30 meters to the left? Were they at the tent and then realize, oh crap, I got to get running. So they're already going to be winded by the time they get to the start line. So there are three examples of ways that we can describe the, the position of the object. So let, let's make them practice now. Baseball. I, how'd you know I love baseball? I, you know what? I, I thought that it was something that, that you'd enjoy here. So let's, let's kind of set this up. So 
we're, let's say that we're going to – let's have the pitcher's mound. So this is where the, where the pitcher stands and throws the little ball at people. Um, and we're going to – Not at them, at, but, but towards, the okay. home, towards home plate. Okay. So let's, let's have that be the origin. Okay. Let's say that up is positive, okay. down is negative. All right. That sounds so what, good. So then, then what do we want them to do? Well, we want them to use each representation. So we want you to do it as a component – as magnitude and direction, and we want them using arrows, so do each one of those. And what is the position of home plate compared to the pitcher's mound? Sounds good. So I think that, that pretty much sums, sums it, up. it up. Yeah, so go, go do go science. Do. There you go.